time George Moore from Apple. I was drafted into the Army uh, in 1965. Uh, I served in the Army for 23 months. Uh, 13 months I spent in Vietnam. Um, I was older than most of the people that uh, served in Vietnam with me. I was 24 when I got drafted. Uh, coming home, it was a, a very different time. Um, I wasn't wounded or anything, so I was able to get two flights, one from Fort Lewis where I must have out into Chicago to Chicago to Philadelphia. From Philadelphia home to the Leon Valley, I uh, had two buses and uh, didn't really notice people around me, uh, except that every now and then I would catch them looking at me kind of funny, but it didn't, it, it didn't uh, dawn on me what was happening. I got off the bus in about one. Went to uh, get to my wife's uh, apartment she, that she had rented. My nine month old daughter was there with her. I was anxious to get there. And Bethlehem was a college man. I had to go by a son with the college kids. It was a uh, Friday evening and the bars were busy. And there was a bunch of mountain street, and that was the first time I ever heard the term. Hey, how many babies do you uh, getting a job was tough. Uh, uh, corporation that I applied at uh, wouldn't hire or get my vets because we didn't want trouble going into them. I finally got a job in Commonwealth, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'd taken a civil service class. And, uh, I got an appointment here in Harrisburg. I wasn't able to buy a home uh, under the GI Bill for two reasons. One, uh, a home that I did want, the woman who owned it wouldn't sell it to me because she didn't support the war and she thought selling it to me would be against her principles. And secondly, under the GI Bill at the time, uh, the seller had to pay points. Uh, and most sellers didn't want to do that because it uh, reduced the amount of money that the court could do. Uh, I spent just about four years commuting back to Bethlehem on weekends and working down here. And I want to tell you, that was harder to do, I think, than actually being away in Vietnam. In Vietnam, I knew more or less when I could expect that might come home. Uh, I had no idea during those four years when the could have to respond to me. When Saigon fell, uh, saw it on television, listened to all the news, and it made me angry. And to tell you the truth, I'm still angry about that. Uh, all of the American casualties, uh, those killed, those wounded, and those that take away uh, emotional and mental scars that will never heal, uh, gave all of that for a cause that was really an honorable one, helping a group of people try to remain as free as possible. And it seemed to me that uh, the fall of Saigon and what was shown was simply an expression of a politician saying, okay, uh, time to go, and we're, we're going to cut you loose. And the years after the fall of Saigon, listening to the news reports about what's happened to the people in South Vietnam when the uh, North Vietnamese government took over, looking at the plight of the refugees, um, you had to realize that the Japanese, the United States government just abandoned them. It was like saying to them, well, I have a life on and there's no more left on the Titanic. Hope you can float with deck joke. Um, I still feel that way, and I'm still angry about what the government did. Uh, to a certain degree, for a long time, I blame the government and society for the president. They never stopped protesting, and they never stopped to find out just You're really what they wanted. I don't think they wanted that. It was far easier to relax. Uh, smoke weed and raise hell on college campuses than having to, to deal with the, the military.